Welcome to Talking with the Animals, an exploration of animal communication. Join animal communicator, craniosacral therapist, and NES practitioner, Caroline Pope, as she discusses how to understand other species as they truly are, not just from the human perspective. <laughs> That's right, Mecco. Discover how communicating with our four-legged friends can open up a whole new world for both of you. And now, your host and Australia's most recognized and well-known animal communicator, Caroline Pope. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking With The Animals, a podcast all things animal communication. I'm your host, Caroline Pope. Thank you very much for joining me. Now today I had a, uh, I believe it was Instagram, I could be wrong, a person wanted me to cover cleaning their dog's teeth and ears. Now whilst we're not, I'm not going to be specifically talking about that, it really did kick up one of my uh, soapboxes and yes I am guilty, it's a bit of a rant so be warned. Um the importance of being able to do these sorts of things, both with dogs and with cats and also horses. Now, I'm not going to get into the whole diet cleaning teeth thing. Just be aware that I think it's something like 80% of dogs and cats over the age of two have periodontal disease and require some sort of teeth cleaning. Uh, My own animals, I am a complete advocate of a raw species appropriate diet with bones so having to use a proverbial toothbrush is not something I have ever or will ever do however I am aware that some dogs and cats can't tolerate bones for a whole bunch of reasons um, and so they may have to clean their animals teeth Uh, cleaning ears lots of animals don't like it sadly sometimes it's got to be done particularly some of the floppy ear eared dogs and dogs with hair in their ears like Lagottas and Poodles and so forth, it does become an ongoing issue. So my thing is very much along the lines of please start handling your animal and I don't care whether they like it. Um, I don't always like going to work every day but sometimes we got to do what we got to do and it's not that you're doing it for any other reason than the animal's own health. Uh, And this can literally get to the stage of saving an animal's life. People that turn around and say, oh, my animal will only eat X or Y. Well, no, they actually won't. If, you know, the proverbial cat that will only eat a certain type of dry food, piff it out in the wild, and I can guarantee within a couple of days it would be murdering birdies. Whilst I'm not suggesting you actually throw the cat out, you do need... It's like a kid that only wants to eat McDonald's or Hungry Jack's, which is pretty much all commercial food is. Um, You really do need to step up as the guardian and ensure adequate nutrition. And sadly, it's not all chocolate and coffee, much as I'd like it to be. It's no different with the animal. Now, I know a lot of dogs don't like having their feet handled. Um, I'm not saying they do, but you do need to work with this. Um, Tellington Tea Touch, T E L L I N G T O N, then the letter T, then the word touch. Have a bit of a Google on YouTube. Um, go species specific, dog, cat, or horse, because there's a heap of videos and stuff out there. T Touch um, breaks the fight flight response and enables new l- learning in a nutshell, particularly good uh, for desensitizing animals. Um, the ear slides are great for working with ears, uh, the tea touch handling the legs, the feet, and so forth. Now, a lot of animals aren't overly fond of it, but at the end of the day, they do have to, you know, dogs have to have their nails clipped. It makes a huge difference to how they walk. Um, you know, cats may not like being groomed, and yeah, God knows one of mine was a tomcat, and he's um, half Persian, and we've had a few battles, but. I'm not saying I spend an hour a day on him, but he does need, might be minute, minute and a half. He, he knows if he struggles, I won't let him go. When he behaves, I let go. It's over and done with quickly. He gets a reward. Now, this is something that I sort of, I'm putting under the very, very broad umbrella of training 
and handling. Consider it all the one umbrella for the moment. Particularly of late, working with vets and um, the lovely Phil of Physio at Pause Connect, I see so many dogs that are paying absolutely no attention to the owner. They're off busy checking out doing their own thing. And then when it comes to doing some of the exercises, say, for example, with physiotherapy where they're needing to walk over poles or something like that, the dog is paying absolutely no attention to the owner whatsoever, um, checking out, and it really makes it very difficult for the physio to assess exactly what that dog's gait is. Is it actually able to lift its feet up over those poles? Is it simply not paying any attention and knocking them over? Or is it that the dog literally can't lift its legs? And quite often the dog will be checking out and you know knocking stuff over. I'll take the dog um, and all of a sudden the dog's that's when we find out. Yes, it can lift its legs. Yes, it can pay attention. These are the sorts of things no one wants to think about physio for their dog or their cat or their horse. The amount of people that make excuses, oh, my horse doesn't like its flank brushed. Well, why? Is it pain association? If so, work through it. Yeah, It may well have stomach ulcers or something. The horse may well have pain. Find it out, deal with it and then work through it. You know, it's all lovely if a horse gets a cut on the neck, but they never do. They always get the most awkward place. And then if a horse isn't used to being handled all over and people make excuses, that's when you're likely to get your head kicked in or the horse requires extra sedation. Probably one of the um, best examples of that was Black Saturday. I used to see a lot of people... Um, up at Whispering Acres making excuses for why their horses wouldn't float. Um, when it came to an emergency, those that were continuously coochie-cooing for two hours at a time, their horses died. Yes, it's harsh, but that's reality. Having a horse that loads on a float, and I'm fully aware I don't have a float myself. I know it can be a pain to get one to, to practice float loading, but it's well worth the effort because you never know when you're going to need that. You never know when you're going to have to medicate your cat and it may be life or death. You never know when you're going to have to be able to have your dog walking balanced on a leash, paying attention to you. So please put the effort in now. If you're incredibly lucky, you won't need it. But as far you know, it can literally be the difference between life and death. Dog that or a cat that won't eat because I've always been fussed over the whole time, and the owners give them, oh, it only eats roast chicken, and only eats this and that. You give my guys a roast chicken, they'll be on death's door. They'll go, woohoo, roast chicken! I'm eating it because it's something special. I've seen dogs and cats die because they wouldn't eat after an accident or something because their owners had always food. Yeah, that always catered to the animal. I've seen dogs that have done cruciates or owners have had to give up and euthanize with large dogs because they haven't been able to do the ongoing physiotherapy because they didn't have control over the animal. So please start putting in boundaries now. And it doesn't matter whether you've just, you have it as a puppy or a kitten, fabulous start as you mean to go on. Or a rescue dog, the old, oh, but, you know, he had a hard time, doesn't matter. You can't change the past. You can only influence the future and help them to cope with it. My own dog, Mecco, was seized by the RSPCA. Uh, let's just say if I could get hold of his old owner, what uh, was done in the Spanish Inquisition, yeah, might be illegal now, but I can think of a few things I'd like to do. However, that's... Saying that is not going to change Mecco's coping or his thresholds. I'm aware he can't feel his legs. I'm aware he has leg problems, he has spinal problems. He has all sorts of issues. But it doesn't mean I don't work with them. It means we start off very small, little bits, little bits. Um, I can now clip all his feet, uh, claws, trim his feet, do his dew claws, and he'll just stand there. It didn't happen overnight. It was continual 
working. You couldn't even touch a leg when I got him. In less than seven months, it's all done. It's not easy and you have to make the time. But now, heaven forbid anything happens and he has an accident, I know he'll be good to handle. I know that my dog will be safe for people to handle. And that's, you know, it's imperative that the animal beat a dog, a cat or a horse. And people laugh about small dogs and cats. I have seen a cat that I wouldn't have handled. I suspect it had a brain tumour, but the vets were all throwing, tossing coins as to who had to handle a cat. So never (laughs) underestimate a cat. They can be pretty full on when they need to be. So please, you know, safety has to come first for yourself, for the animal. And, you know, it's always gentle. It's always finished with a treat. But please get your animals under control. Make it a game if you need to, but always have them checking in and listening to you because if they're not doing it at home or they're not doing it on a walk, I can guarantee when push comes to shove and they really need it to happen at a vet clinic or during the, say, for example, physiotherapy, any sort of rehabilitation work or a chronically ill cat with something like hypothyroidism has to be dosed every day. These are the sorts of things that starting now before you really need it can make a huge, huge impact on the quality of life for your animal and in actual fact may even save your animal's life. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Talking With The Animals. I realise it probably wasn't quite what you're expecting. It's not fully animal communication. However, it really is that important. Communication is a very, very useful tool, but it's not a substitute for veterinary or for training. And this is why I wanted to cover this topic, because doing so, as I've said, may save your animal's life. Now, again, thank you for listening. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a message. Until next week, stay safe, enjoy, and remember to, when you can, to talk with the animals. Thank you for listening to Talking With The Animals. To learn more about Caroline and the services she provides, visit caroline-pope.com. You can also find her on Facebook at Caroline Pope Animal Communicator CST and NES Therapy. Are you ready to change the way you see your world and the animals in it? Well, we know his answer. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.